Short rays, aka volumetric lighting, are visual effects that simulate how light interacts with particles in the air, creating beams of light that appear to interact with objects like clouds or windows. It improves the atmosphere of video games a lot and looks really nice, especially in stylistic art styles. Achieving basic code rays that interact with objects is relatively straightforward to accomplish. First, we determine the distance from each pixel to the object that it renders. Unity provides this information in a death map. Now, we divide the distance into small parts and add the amount of light registered for each part together. This sum can be used to color pixels accordingly to create the code ray effect, which is enough for our stylistic top-down game. It's also really easy to add some tweaks in how these values are used to create stylistic visual effects. In a project that I am working on with a friend of mine, we are simulating cloud shadows on materials by sampling a three-dimensional complex noise. But this introduces a new problem. How to include god rays for multi-layered shadows that are purely simulated on top of objects' surfaces. The easiest way to do this would be to use the ray march, and there when fetching the amount of sunlight for each step, we would now also generate a cloud value from the noise function. Even though this works perfectly fine, it will however demolish our FPS. So, let's optimize using the qualities of an orthographic camera projection, which essentially makes our field of view a perfect box. Let's say the sun is directly above the camera, and our camera is perfectly aligned with the horizon. In this case, the code ray value for the pixel on top of screen is always the same as the code ray value for a pixel on the bottom of the screen with the same axe. In fact, this value is the same for all pixels that share the same axe coordinate. Using this idea, we can massively reduce the number of times we have to ask for a value from the noise function. We only have to compute the value once for each pixel on the x-axis, because we know it will always be the same for all the pixels that share the same x-coordinate. If the sun is facing the screen from another direction, this theory still applies. We only have to account for the sun's angle when determining which pixels share the same value. Currently, the god rays are purely two-dimensional, but the whole point of volumetric lights is that they feel three-dimensional. Building on the previous example, we can compute cloud values for a 2D render texture and place it over our camera's field of view, like so. When this render texture is aligned with the camera and its normal vector points at the sun, it effectively contains every possible cloud value that our camera could see. Now let's go back to our ray march. Here, instead of using the noise function to calculate a cloud value for each world position, we can just fetch it from this pre-computed render texture. We know that this is possible because each world position has the same god ray value among all other world positions that are aligned with the sun from its perspective. Here you can see the render texture visualized as a physical plane above the camera's field of view. But of course, in code, we are only using basic vector mathematics to convert a world position of the ray march to an UV that corresponds to the right position in the render texture so that we can read it. While the performance of this system is significantly better than using the noise function at every step of the ray march, we are still reading a render texture hundreds if not thousands of times for every pixel in every frame. We can optimize the system to maximize the accuracy of clouds while simultaneously significantly reducing the number of times we are reading from a render texture. Here, the purple area visualizes those Raymart steps that are behind the rendered objects and should not be included in the Raymart. If our render texture is 256 pixels wide and 2048 pixels long, we would have to read something like a thousand pixels every time we perform a Raymart. What we can do is to create another render texture that pre-computes a large batch of pixels from the more accurate texture. The width would have to be the same, 256 pixels, but its height could only be something like 8 pixels. In this example, when our ray match reads one pixel from the second pre-computed texture, we get exactly the same accuracy and result as we would have gotten from reading hundreds of pixels from the original texture. We just have to make sure that when we begin reading this faster texture, 
the value of the pixel we are reading does not contain god ray data from the purple area which is behind the object. Now instead of performing something like 1000 iterations per pixel in our ray march, we only have to perform a fraction of it without sacrificing on accuracy at all. As a side note, the values used in this example were completely made up. In my actual system, these values are determined programmatically to minimize the total number of iterations this system performs on average. Great, so now we have a conceptual understanding on what we should do, so let's take a trip down the memory lane and see what it looked like for me to develop this. Time can never be your trusted friend or your sworn ally. No, it's the harshest mistress of all. And life is just a chain of moments spent, a thousand hellos and Maybe a love like ours can leave out its call. I will keep you near until the world is you are safe with me. If you like how this Godray effect looks like, then stay tuned, because I'm currently in the process of publishing this on the Unity Asset Store. I'll keep you guys updated on how the publishing goes, so I'll see you soon, and thanks for watching.